Hey guys, it's Alex and Dad from 7th Hour Films, back again with Doctor Who Classic. Last time on Doctor Who Classic, we started off The Reign of Terror. What was that one about? Well, if you recall correctly, um, after the uh, uh, experience with the uh, sensorites, uh, Ian and the Doctor got into a spat, and basically the Doctor said he was going to drop them off at home. And when they landed, they were 100 miles from London, and that was true, but they were in Paris in 1793, during the French Revolution. Yeah. And uh, although they all got separated, uh, the doctor unfortunately left in a house that was burned but was saved by a young boy. Uh, Ian and Barbara and Susan uh, all were taken to prison because they, they were supposedly uh, revolutionaries. Somebody told Ian something that he perhaps should not know, and so now there's an uh, Inspector Javert type who's following him, trying to find out what it is. But Barbara and Susan are ultimately... Uh, rescued and taken to uh, somebody's house, and they're going to try to somehow get them back to England, if that's if what I recall correctly. Something like that. And then uh, the doctor did arrive at Paris and was posing as a regional governor. Um, that's right. And then uh, the citizen inspector guy uh, was sort of questioning him, and now he's going off to meet Robespierre, and uh, the other guy, the tailor guy, came in, showed one of them the ring to prove that the doctor was an imposter. So, okay. Yeah, that's basically where we left off on that one. Uh, so, these first two episodes are animated. That will be interesting. Yes, that will be quite different from what we're used to. Uh, normally, for missing episodes, we just have the telesnaps. So. <laughs> and although I love the Marco Polo story, yeah, getting through... All of those, what was it, six or seven episodes yeah. as telesnaps was just mind-bending. Yeah. Um, but we shouldn't have to worry about that for a while, I don't think. But I don't remember. Um, this is also the finale to season one. Oh, cool. Yeah. We are actually finally going to be moving on into season two next time. Ooh. Yeah, which we've we've never done because for, you know, when we were doing the tour of Classic Who, we stayed just at the first season with the first Doctor, just going through those different episodes. So, yeah. Um, that is... That's pretty much it. So we might as well go ahead and get right into this episode of Doctor Who Classic. Vive la France. So they didn't animate the opening. I thought that would be interesting if they had tried to... Nah. Rotoscope that or something. Nah. Might as well just keep it to the same one, so... Recent memoranda from your province suggest that the purge of our enemies in your region is progressing very slowly. Oh, you've reached that conclusion. Mm. Well, perhaps we have fewer enemies in our region. It may be that Paris can take an example from us. <laughs> is the guy behind the desk supposed to be Robespierre? We in Paris are aware Must of be. My impression was that he almost always wore the dark glasses because his he, he couldn't stand the bright lights. Hmm. Oh. French got rid of one tyrant and ended up with another. Mm. Hmm. This animation style is very odd. Well, again, I, I want to say there's this thing called rotoscope where it's kind of like the forerunner of motion capture. So it makes me believe that Somehow or other, they had a very basic version of the the actual episode and have somehow managed to literally copy it uh, frame for frame. Hmm. I think I'll return to bed if you'll excuse me. Yes, of course. I'm sorry we disturbed you. The only thing is they're, they're not doing the wider shots that the show normally One does. One can't be friends with everybody. We'll meet again, Barbara. And soon. And they don't really let any shot last a few seconds. 
And just what do you think you're doing, Jada? Hmm? The merchant said you were staying. I must obey him. Then what do you think he'll say when he hears you delayed me? Hmm? I'm sorry, citizen, I'm sorry. But if he comes back and finds you gone, it could be even worse. Very well. I'll stay then. And I shall say nothing of this disgraceful behavior, if only for your sake. Thank you, citizen. Thank you. This way. Yeah, one of the things about the French Revolution, they all called each other citizen. They were all supposed to be equal, liberty, equality, fraternity. But there were different levels of equality. Come, we'll have breakfast. And your time may not be wasted, citizen. I've got a feeling that it will be quite an eventful day. We're not saying much. <laughs> no, I mean, I haven't written much either. No, oh, it all just feels like the connecting threads. We'll get to the bigger stuff we later. Yeah, your haircut doesn't exactly blend in, Ian. Hmm. Yes, I'll treat her. It's a simple method of bloodletting. Unfortunately, I shall have to go out and collect some leeches. You called rather early. I was on my way to collect them first thing this morning, but you're welcome to wait. Well, maybe it would be better if we came back. Come back. No, no, no. I shall be out all day. You'll have to wait, but please make yourself comfortable. <laughs> Barbara, I don't like him. I can't stand the thought of having leeches on me. No. I got the impression that he suspected us. Come on. Let's go. You know what I thought would be kind of funny? Is if Susan accidentally got the disease from the sensorites and it's only now manifesting you may remember in now, yes. english history there was a time when long hair right. are you alone met the yes. aristocracy Jules the said you might be able to help. and the people who cut their hair short were known as the roundheads because they were the basically the bourgeoisie yes i know you walked right into my trap didn't you Ian? Well. All righty, that's part four. Yeah, like you said, a whole lot of exposition. Yeah, it was a lot of a lot of connecting stuff. I wrote down I wrote down two things, and one of those was just the animation, so that doesn't even really count. Yeah, which again, that animation, it's like I can see where this can be good, but if they would just hold a shot for five seconds. <laughs> Like, there were times, I swear, there were five shots within three seconds. And, like, yeah. just stop. Let it breathe for a bit. <laughs> but, yeah. Not a whole lot going on in that one. Now, I know this is weird because the original was in black and white. But it seems to me that if you're going to go to all the trouble of making the animation, why not do it in color? Yeah. That that would make sense. Um <sighs> It would make sense to do it in color, or at least, like, a better black and white. Like, I feel like you could have played with the black and white a little bit better, too. So, I, I don't know. It's it's definitely an interesting style, though. Yeah. It is it is certainly better than uh, Scream of the Shalka. Like, that that one was like, okay, there's a couple. Like, we, we drew a body, and then we're just kind of moving it a little. It's like... <laughs> They do have some good angles, they just don't let them last a little while. Um, so, when was this animation made? Uh, I have no idea. I would assume 2000s, so maybe even 2010s. So, Because hmm. um, I know they've been... I think they've been ramping up trying to do more animations over the past 10 years or so. So, okay. yeah. And it would also make sense to do that as the the modern show has gotten more popular over the years too. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, yeah. It. I mean, it's it's interesting and is a little better than you know watching the recons, but, um, but yeah, it's it's just odd. Like I, I can see where they're trying to go, which is like, okay, well, if you just fix one or two things, let a few shots just play out get some wider shots like then it would it'd be perfectly fine yeah. so but we also don't know maybe this was their first foray into yeah. doing these animations so oh just hang on a second um 
talk about generational word use. You just used the word recon, which took me about two seconds to realize you meant reconstruction. Because to me, when I hear the word recon, having grown up in a military family, recon means yeah. reconnoiter to you know go out and search an area, and make sure that there's no. So it's just every now and then yeah, I am I I'm, I'm made aware of the difference <laughs> in our ages and our backgrounds because you have no military background whatsoever because I was never in the military. But right. literally the first twenty years of my life, I was in a military family because my dad was in the Air Force uh, <laughs> until he retired when I was in college. So yeah, it just every now and then just. <laughs> Go uh, oh reconstruction okay yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that's true that's that's interesting yeah I would never have thought of that so it would have been interesting if they reanimated the opening yeah just to see if they could do it yeah but even if on even on the recons they keep the exact same intro because they can it's just, it's on every episode. Their animation is also, like, weirdly fluid when they're walking. Put all ideas of escape out of your head. What happened? Where's Susan? Oh, she's here. We were arrested together. She's here? Yes. Is she well? Yes, she's fine. She had a slight fever, but she's recovered now. Well, now we must find Chesterton and try and get back to the ship. Apparently when you're kidnapped, you can just get over a fever. Oh, yes. I can't tell, but it looked like Ian had his index finger and then four fingers there. Just in that one shot. How did you get to France? Really went in that way. The truth. Oh, yes. The truth, though. You swear it? Yes, I swear it. I flew here with three friends in a small box. When I left England, it was nineteen sixty-three. It was a very, like, kind of sluggish fight scene. Tomorrow, the 27th of July, 1794, will be a date for history. Tell me the leader of this group, citizen. He will be immediately executed. I shall not fail you. Against which member is the indictment being brought, citizen? Against me, Lamette. Against me, Robespierre. Sorry, didn't want to interrupt. Barbara, we've taken size just by being here. Jules actually shot him. It could just as easily have been me. And what about Robespierre? I suppose you think... Just because he... an extremist like Robespierre... Oh, Barbara, Jules is our friend. He said I know lie. all that. The revolution isn't all bad. Neither are the people who support it. It's changed things for the whole world. And good, honest people gave their lives for that change. Well, he got what he deserved. Before you decide what people deserve. It's an interesting conversation on whether or not you should kill. A conversation the doctor would take up later. Well, especially if it's a him or me. Well, yeah. And Leon was trying to kill him, so. Yeah. And in fact, there were two shots, so I'm assuming that he got off a shot but missed. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's about time we had to talk. Oh, well, that didn't work. <laughs> it's interesting. I must insist the first doctor is a bit more prone to violence. I'm afraid you're not in a position to insist on anything. Here they are. Your friend has betrayed us. All right, that's part five. And back to live action. Yep. 
it is interesting that they say that Jules wasn't part of the aristocracy at all. He's just doing this because of the disorder going on in France. Yeah. So. Here they are. See, now it's weird. <laughs> I can use my authority to get safe passage for all of you to wherever you want to go. But He's look, right, Doctor. No harm will come to Susan, I promise. I gave orders that she was to remain in the cell. Now, you know that's true. The jailer would die rather than see that cell door opened again. Hmm. Very well. Very well. If you must tell, I your, just noticed tell your story, then get on with it. ribbons on the doctor's hat, because it's not in color. But well, those are the French well, national colors, blue, white, and red. Well, well, well. said very little. He was badly wounded, as you know. Yes. You should have little difficulty getting there tonight. Stay the night and return here tomorrow morning. That way you won't run into any patrols. Now, where exactly is this inn, Jules? It's a good two hours ride. We'll take the Calais Road and ride due north. When we reach this fork, we'll see a forest. We'll circle it and ride west. They're going to do all this within the episode? <laughs> I feel like this should have been last episode. <laughs> this is a typical night's trade. I'm not surprised this place was chosen. Mm. I've bound and gagged the innkeeper. Very similar in to a cellar. scene It'll from the Scarlet the Pimpernel. Ian's nearly finished. Good. Oh, nice way to cover up her modern hair. Yeah. Got enough scarf there? <laughs> Doesn't wish to have his face be seen. Did you see well. who it was? No. Did you? No. No. I'm delighted you could get here, General. Oh. Monsieur Napoleon. Yeah. I mean, when they said, you know, he could be the next ruler of France, like, is he going to be Napoleon? I guess. A useful prop to your new government. Oh, come, General. You would be more than just a figurehead. Yes, I know I would. I'm glad you appreciate it. <laughs> be careful what you wish for. Which right. Then Robespierre could already be under arrest. I must find out. There may still be time. You'd keep Robespierre as ruler of France? If I thought it was the only way we to... We need a strong government, but not a military dictatorship. And it could happen. It will happen. Oh, save your breath, my dear. Do as you think fit. <laughs> Talk about your time travel dilemma. Do you prevent Napoleon? But uh, keep no, Robespierre. Robespierre will be guillotine, whatever we do. I've told you about position so yes, often. Yes, I know. You can't influence or change history. I learned that lesson with the Aztecs. The events will happen <laughs> just as they're written. I'm afraid so, and we can't stem the tide. But at least we can stop being carried away with the blood. Now, Susan and the prisoner. Get that woman a shawl. <laughs> I will promise your safety! I promise to save France! I will promise you! It's a great way to save on makeup. Also, locking the door Shouldn't and holding that gun in? did nothing for him. <laughs> Now he's got more drunk buddies. Oh, bloody hell. You! <laughs> you came back! I can see you did not expect me. No, but I'm glad you came. I still have a score to settle with you. Really? I see you haven't heard the, ner the news yet, my man. Oh, heard I the nerves? Robespierre. <laughs> Tomorrow, there will be a new bunch of prisoners, Robespierre's friends. So I hope everything will be ready, including the cell. Well... Uh, shall I release the prisoner citizens? Certainly. Now, let me have the key to the dungeon. This guy falls for everything the doctor says. The ropes there. This is indeed an owner. Don't waste your breath on him. He can't answer you back. He tried writing us a letter, but uh, too bad we don't read, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Remember the name. Napoleon Bonaparte. Corsican? Ruling France? 
Well, if you're certain that's where you want to be left. I get the impression they don't know where they're heading for. Come to that. Do any of us. Ah, the Corsican. <laughs> don't let the doctor hear you say that they don't know where they're going. It's the whole reason we ended up here. Tried to kill him with a gun, the bullet would have missed him. Well, it's hardly fair <laughs> to speculate, is it? No, no, I'm afraid you belittle things. Our lives are important, at least to us. And as we see, so we learn. And what are we going to see and learn next, Doctor? Well, unlike the old adage, my boy, our destiny is in the stars. So let's go and search for it. <laughs> Alrighty, that's the end of the first season. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's some good stuff in there. I mean, again, I think it, they play to their strengths with these historicals. Yeah. Um, and I know there are a lot of people who like the science fiction stuff. But again, to, the whole idea of time travel is you have to go to places where you can experience that particular time. Yeah. So, so I, again, I enjoy this one. Uh, almost as much as the Aztecs. This one, the, that fourth episode really kind of you know bogged yeah. down. But a, again, I think they could have cut out some of that and moved some of the fifth into the fourth, and then expanded the sixth. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, let's see. We did actually get a, a decent amount of notes on this one. Um, so the first thing I wrote down which we pretty much already talked about is the animation style for the uh for parts four and five again you know just to reiterate it's it's okay it just they needed to let some shots play out and it would have worked out and yeah they could have done it in color but it, it it works that it's in black and white still yeah um again better than seeing it uh, in the telesnaps I, I just have to admit that yes yeah um let's see uh, the next thing I wrote down was uh, Susan's fever, which again that just sort of happened, didn't it? Yeah. Well, now because they were in the dungeon, which you know there's probably a lot of mold. You know, it's very damp down there because they're usually below ground. I kind of assumed that she just you know got a bad cold or you know I didn't want to say she had pneumonia or anything like that, but but the fact that she recovered from it so quickly too after getting out of the dungeon. Yeah. That, I, I think that was just a plot device. To get them to the physician to talk about the leeches and yeah. then have the doctor be uh, a bad guy on top of that. So, yeah, that's true. Because um, it seemed like I mean, she was still kind of out of it, even just meeting the physician. And then, as soon as the you know leeches were brought up and bloodletting, immediately she's completely <laughs> over that fever and she is ready to get out of there. Yeah. So I thought that was a little odd, but I mean, I guess maybe you could just say you know. It gave Susan something to do, which sort of goes to an overarching problem with the writing for Susan is that a lot of times it is just, we got to give Susan something to do. Yeah. Like, they they definitely never really thought out what to do with this character. Yeah. Because um, it's like, okay, you know, Ian and Barbara, they're kind of our main characters. They do a lot of the stuff, and... The Doctor does a lot of stuff on his own, too, but then you have the added mystery about him, you know, and, you know, he does stuff in a very different way. So it, it definitely feels like Susan's really just kind of there, and they really don't know what to do with her. Yeah. So um, uh, I wrote down Leon, Leon the traitor. Uh, that was interesting. Um, now, I do want to go back. We're going to have to go back, I believe, to part five. Let me turn that down. Let me look. Because there is a shot where I want to check this animation a bit. I wonder if it was back here. Oh, about the fingers? Yeah, I wanted to I wanted to check that. It's giving you time to consider. I don't need time. I have no information. We'll decide that when you talk. When you talk. Right, so it'll have to be later. Let's see. It's like one of the first shots whenever they cut back to him. 
Ugh. Yeah. Oh, see, well, that, that one up there, that's the thumb of his other hand. But oh, it looks okay. like an extra finger yeah. on his right hand. Okay, because I was very... I was curious <laughs> about that. I was like, is that is that a problem with the animation, or is that just the fact that like it's... Yeah. You know, shaded weirdly. No, his his right hand has his thumb underneath his fingers. Yes. And because he seems to be holding on to something between yeah. the four fingers and his thumb there, that's what makes it look like, yeah. He's, yeah. It does make it look like he's got five fingers. Yeah, because they, they put a lot of shadow underneath on his left hand, so the thumb sticks out, and just the way it looks, it looks yeah. like it's right... Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, we're good. Okay, that th- that's good because I'm I, I was thinking like man that's I mean come on guys it's uh, a it's an easy mistake you know so uh, I'm glad that that's that was just a uh, a mistake on my part not on theirs so uh, but anyway uh, yeah Leon was now, a traitor now Leon uh, again I thought that I heard two shots um, Jules had the rifle and I thought that Leon still had his pistol in his hand. So yeah. when uh, Jules shot him, then basically he was, you know, he wasn't murdering him for being a traitor. He was, yeah, you know, basically protecting his life and and Ian's. Yeah, I think that's the way they wanted it to be portrayed there, anyway. Well, because because Leon did shoot at Jules, but he used a body to block it basically, and then he shot with one of their uh, one of their rifles or muskets or whatever. Yeah. So. Yeah, although it, I thought it looked like he shot him, shot him in the leg. So maybe we can. Right, throws the gun, he hey. hits him, knocks him down. Right. And then there's this guy. It's it is a very like weird moving fight too. Just because of the animation style. I think he's holding his side. Yeah. Spider crawling down the <laughs> side there. Didn't see that one before. Well. Yeah. All right. So. All right. So yeah, it must have shot him in the side, and that would. That's what ultimately killed him. Yeah. Um, and there is also the distinction that um, Leon went for his gun and thus uh, Jewel shot him. So, yeah. um, which I guess you know kind of goes into you know Barbara doesn't like that they had to kill him, which makes sense. You know, uh, you know later on the doctor will sort of take up that argument as well that oh you shouldn't kill you shouldn't you know, uh, use guns or anything. He, be, he becomes really anti-gun later. Um, but uh, it is interesting because they bring up the fact that they really didn't have another choice, yeah. you know. Unless they had... Uh, supposedly, I suppose... You could possibly... <coughs> if you shot his leg and he didn't bleed out, that could have been enough just to knock him out. But it, it does make sense that they had to kill him. Yeah. So... Um, you actually wrote down two notes yes. in here. Yes, I did. So, uh, uh, which was interesting. You never write stuff. I know, but I the two things happened almost uh, simultaneously, and I didn't want to stop it because it was a very good plot point there. But again, you want to talk about a very minor point that only history majors would would probably realize. When he talked about tomorrow, the twenty seventh of July, seventeen ninety four, the French had changed the calendar. Hmm. And so they wouldn't have had January, February, March, April, May, June, July sort of things. They had they had renamed all of the months. And in fact, if I recall correctly, they'd even changed the length of a week from seven days to ten days so that every month had 30 days. So that at the end of 12 months, you had 360 days, and then there were uh, five I think it's called intercalary days or intercalary days, whatever. Uh, but the uh, the fact that, and I realize that they're using this for British kids yeah. in the in the nineteen uh, sixties, but still, accurately speaking, he should have said the you know eighteenth of Vandermeer or whatever it was. I don't even remember what that what that date was. So minor thing there, but it would have been you know a nice little throw in. Right. And the other thing is, 
they were talking about the uh, makeup of the assembly. And again, the whole idea of left-wing and right-wing politics actually got started in that assembly, if you remember, because from where the speaker was sitting, all of the very conservative French politicians sat on the right-hand side, and all of the more liberal politicians sat on the left-hand side. So when you get down to talking about left-wing politics and right-wing politics, that's where it actually got started, was in the, the French Assembly. Yeah, that makes sense, because, you know, when you really stop and think about, you know, when people talk about, oh, leftists or alt-right or whatever, all those, and it's like, yeah, what? why was there? You know, if you just stop and think, like, wait, who decided what was on the left and what was on the right? And it's like, <laughs> oh, it just happened to be <coughs> it just, where they sat. It, seriously, uh, as the speaker faced the auditorium, uh, and because, you know, politicians of a like mind tend to congregate together, they weren't, uh, it's not like the United States Senate where basically you just, you're assigned whatever. Uh, in this instance, all the conservatives happened to sit on the right side and all of the liberals sat on the left side. And so that became known as right wing and left wing politics. Hmm. That's, that's interesting. It's just, it's just a coincidence that stuck basically. Yes. So, um, let's see. Oh yeah, I did write down... Uh, violence. This is a, I guess, sort of going off of uh, Barbara's thing about you know should you kill or not. I find that this the first Doctor is he a little bit more violent than than we're kind of used to. Yeah. I mean you know obviously like the third Doctor would get into a fight or something like that, but, but usually only to defend himself. Remember he yeah, never starts it. That's true. Whereas twice in this serial, you know, we had the one time where you know they were fooling. The one guy, and then the doctor just took a shovel and then hit him in the back. And then uh, in this one, where uh, the the prison guard, you know, he, he went to go in there, and then the doctor, you know, smashed a pot on his head, and it's like, <laughs> man, the doctor's really getting a little more, <coughs> a little more hardcore. Yeah. So uh, I thought that was interesting because again, you know, he'll be the one that takes up this argument that you know Barbara has about killing, and. And he does have his moments where maybe he gets a bit more violent than, you know, maybe he should be. But, yeah, just twice in the same serial, he yeah. just completely knocks a guy out. So now, again, minor point. But now that you're saying that, this goes back again to that uh, argument that Barb was trying to get past in the Aztecs, which was, you know, the Aztecs and their blood sacrifice and, you know, that's horrible and we should stop that. But as a history teacher, she should know the next chapter of the Aztec story is Here Come the Spanish. And the Spanish literally obliterated the Aztecs because they had you know, guns. And let's, you know, let's bypass the whole uh, smallpox disease sort of thing. But it's interesting that Barbara would say so much against the Aztecs because of their blood sacrifice. But it makes you wonder if she had met Cortez would she have done the same thing and say, you have no right to exterminate this particular group of people yeah. just because you feel that you're superior because, you know, you have superior technology? Yeah. I mean, I would imagine... I would imagine that she would. Um, because, honestly, if anything, you know, just the way you sort of describe that, it's like, you know, you, know, you don't have the right, you know, just because you think you're superior. Honestly, that then ties back all the way to the Daleks, you know, because they are, you know, the Daleks are, that's their whole thing, is being the superior race to everyone. Yeah. So, um, it, it, it could be that. Um, let's see. Um, oh yeah. Uh, uh, we did get that Jules was not uh, an aristocrat. Uh, which is interesting, which you could also maybe say uh, the two guys that we met uh, in the house before they died, maybe they weren't aristocrats uh, either. But it, it's only, the only reason they're doing this is because they want to bring order back to yeah. um, back to France. Because, yeah, it is interesting, like, you know, you, you almost think like, well, if we go back and do a story with the French Revolution, it's like, okay, well, maybe it would be like, starting out the French Revolution and, you know, overthrowing the monarchy and everything. But it's interesting that for this story, 
the take is that well it's going to be later and all we're gonna you know focus on all the chaos that's going on yeah. you know after they overthrow the monarchy so it's 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 an interesting side to or not side but it's an interesting angle to take on a story for the French Revolution yeah so and again very intriguing that they know what's going to happen yes and, you know it's like if you were to have told any one of those people, you know, and although I guess Ian did mention it, you know, you keep an eye out for Napoleon Bonaparte and him. The Corsican, it's like nobody would have ever thought that this young man, because he was still in his 20s at the time, this young man from an outlying province, you know, out in the boondocks, out in the Mediterranean, that had only become a French uh province the year before Napoleon was born. That's why he's actually, he's got an Italian name. The, you know, if somebody had said to them, well, here's what's going to happen. Napoleon Bonaparte's going to take over. They would have laughed at you. That would have been, no, that's not possible. You know, some good Frenchman will come along and will lead us out of this. And then yeah. they end up with Napoleon Bonaparte, who right. then literally leads them down to uh, a 15-year-long campaign to try to project French culture I mean, I guess you can call it the French Manifest Destiny, the idea that French culture is superior to all other cultures well, in yeah. Europe, so we're going to impose it on you, and then Europe rising up against them and saying, you can't do that. But unfortunately, and this is, again, one of those great lessons of cause and effect, uh, before Napoleon, there were very few actual countries in Europe. You know, there were these tiny little uh, uh, principalities and things like that. But because of Napoleon, we begin to see the, the creation of Italy Unfortunately, the creation of Germany and, you know, the Duchy of Poland and, and all that sort of stuff. And so Napoleon leads to the rise of nationalism, which leads to World War One. Yeah. So, you know, there's a, a story for you. You know, you know, do they have the right to stop Robespierre? What if one of them suggested, well, we could save Europe a lot of trouble if we just shot Napoleon in the head? Yeah. Which also, you know, we should clarify, you know, when you say, unfortunately, it created Germany, it, you're you're cool now. Yes, you're you're cool now. You, but you know, but the Germany, things happen. Germany of the late 1800s and right up until 1945 yeah. was literally a direct uh, cause and effect from the Napoleonic Wars. Yeah, if he hadn't tried to impose his culture on the Germans, they would have never never gathered together f to become the German national culture that they were. Right. Um, which also ties into um, the interesting question: Do you keep do you keep Robespierre or do you go for Napoleon? And of course, you know the the gang is sitting there and it's like, well, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> we know what's going to happen, but uh, you you, yeah. you guys sort that out. And and that's this again. That's one of those great time travel questions. You already know what's going to happen. You know that Napoleon's going to be very very bad. But on the other hand, you also know what Robespierre was like before he was shot and then guillotined. Yeah. And so you think to yourself, do you have any belief that Robespierre would have changed? No, the man was probably, you know, a psychopath. So, you know, it's the lesser of two evils. You know, you can prevent Napoleon, but then you're going to have to deal with a whole new timeline with Robespierre in, in the beginning. Or do you just say, "What? here's what we already know, so let's just go ahead and go with that. Yeah. Or do you try to find somebody new, get rid of Robespierre and Napoleon and see what happens? Yeah, I mean, that that would be tricky. And it also, you know, ties into, you know, what they were saying at the end is like, oh, well, we can't we can't change time. You know, no matter what we tried, no matter what we could try to do, nothing would happen. You know, even if we sent a letter to Napoleon, it wouldn't work. He'd yeah. forget it, it'd get lost or anything. You know, even if you tried to shoot him, magically the bullet wouldn't hit him. Yeah. Now... I, my opinion in that somebody should have said Napoleon would ignore it. Yeah. Because no matter how well you laid out your particular version of here's what's going to happen, Napoleon had his own vision for Europe and nothing was going to change that. Yeah. Um, well, then just talking about, you know, well, even if we tried to shoot him, you know, somehow we would miss, you know. That is interesting because it sort of brings up the idea that, you know, well, it, it does bring up the idea that time can't be changed not that you shouldn't change time but it can't be changed which is interesting you know because they bring up later on in the show it's like well time time can change can it can be rewritten but there are some moments that are 
fixed. Yeah. You know, that that absolutely cannot change. So well, the water of Mars. Waters of Mars. Yes. When uh, the doctor saves the commander there of the of the Mars base, but she ends up realizing yeah. that if she survives, then the future will not happen. Right. That which that is the moment where yeah, it, it's sort of the doctor's lowest moment when he tries to you know, cause it's a fixed point that, you know, this entire crew dies on Mars. Whereas he's things like, but these are, you know, innocent people. I will try to save them, you know. I'm I'm a time lord, time will listen to me. And then time and, you know, uh, the commander just kind of slap back and is like, no, this still has to happen. You cannot change something this big and important. Yeah. So it's it's one thing where it's like, okay, there's in this one they're sort of suggesting, well, it's impossible to change time, but it's like, okay, well, time can be changed, but maybe not this one. You know, there there would be something to where Napoleon, you know, couldn't be killed early or he, you know, gives up his grand plans or anything like that. So, um, it would be interesting to think, though, uh, back with the Aztecs, could Barbara have changed that? Possibly. It, it might just be that, you know, well, the situation didn't work out that way for her, but if it were possible, how could that have affected the world or the yeah. timeline? Well, or in anything? that particular instance, think about this. Let's say that Barbara convinces the Aztecs to give up blood sacrifice. That's still not going to stop the Spanish from coming in and True. realizing that because, in their opinion, the Aztecs were an inferior culture, therefore they could take their land and their wealth and their, you know, livestock and even their people and make them into slaves. So you can you could have changed the Aztecs for you know a short period of time, but ultimately you would have never been able to change the, what happened with the Spanish. Right. Yeah, because the Spanish didn't eliminate the Aztecs because of their religion, because of their blood sacrifice. They took them over because that made the Spanish wealthy. Yeah. Um, or even like um, like with Marco Polo, it's like okay, well. If the Doctor and the gang weren't here, everything would have still happened anyway. You know, like, Tegana would have been defeated by Marco Polo and everything would have been fine. And, and the Khan would have let Marco Polo return to Venice. So, um, so yeah, it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, can time, time can change, but sometimes, you know, maybe time will change, but everything sort of works out still the same way. Uh, so. That reminds me, and this is a obscure reference, uh, in uh, The Big Bang Theory, uh, when uh, Dr. Amy Farrah Fowler watches Raiders of the Lost Ark for the first time, which is, you know, the favorite show of uh, all the four guys who are the principals in that show, she brings up the point that Indiana Jones is completely unnecessary to that script. Yeah. Because when you think about it, if you take Indiana Jones out of it, at some point, they will discover the Ark of the Covenant. They will open it up. It will destroy them anyway. No, you know, nothing changes. So yeah. that's what's happening here. We're seeing the Doctor and Barbara and Ian and Susan going into these situations, but not ultimately changing their outcome. Just yeah. being witnesses and remarking on it. I mean, that's. I think that's kind of one of the things I think the writers were, were trying to do is to simply say, hey, you know, let's take a different perspective or... You know, we realize that we're looking at this from a 20th century point of view, but we can't do that. You know, this is what they were thinking uh, in the 1800s, and we have to understand we cannot judge them by our standards. Right. And and it is interesting to try to write, you know, some of these things where it's like, okay, so these are the events that happen, and okay, we're putting the gang in there, and it's like, but nothing really changes. Yeah. It's like, it's just the gang, you know, watching history play out, or even in... Uh, the more modern episodes where, you know, even if they go back in time and meet someone, you know, it's still, you know, then there's aliens on top of that. Because always, <laughs> there's always got to be aliens. So um, I think it's uh, the third episode with uh, Christopher Eccleston where they, they go back in time and they meet Charles Dickens. And there happens to be ghosts around and they have to figure that out. Turns out they're aliens, whole thing, time war, all that stuff. And they defeat him. And then that's... Just kind of that, and Charles Dickens just goes about his life, basically. So, <laughs> and it's like, well, that happened. It, I mean, yeah, it does, you know, it is something different in his timeline, technically. It's like, well, he met aliens, he met the Doctor and everything.
but his life is pretty much still the same. Yeah. So, um, so let's see. Um, we did have the reveal of Sterling, uh, of who he actually was, which was interesting. Yeah. Which is also one of those things I was thinking of. It's like, you know, oh, he reveals himself as Sterling and his performance doesn't really change. And it's like, you know, it's one of those things because this is a show in English and they're all British actors. So it's like, so nothing's really changed. Like I'm thinking like, okay, well, you know, because none of them are attempting a French accent or anything. So it's like, I guess he was just that good at blending in. It's like, well, I guess he was fluent in French. So he, everything was fine. They didn't suspect him of being English, (laughs) but yeah, it is one of those things where it's like, oh yeah, I'm English. It's like, I don't sound any different now that I've revealed that, but all right. Yeah. yeah you, it's one of those points that you and I look at, but again, I, as a 12-year-old, I would have never thought of that. Yeah, that's true. Um, and then I also wrote down, uh, pretty much the last thing I wrote down was the escape. Uh, it is kind of interesting just with everything, like, you know, like it does sort of create like a bit of tension when it's like, okay, everything is ramping up. You know, Robespierre just got shot like all right we're all you know we're leading up he's gonna get his head cut off and napoleon's gonna take over at some point it's like and the main thing is while all this is happening and you know people are dragging robespierre and his friends to prison and everything it's like we have to get out of here (laughs) you know so it 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 was an interesting like kind of tension there it's like even though we pretty much know obviously that everyone's gonna get out of it fine but it's like it, it is just one of those interesting things where it's like you know like everything is happening but that doesn't matter. We have to leave. Yeah. So I think what the doctor basically said was, as they were you know dragging Robespierre into the prison, and Susan said, you know, aren't you worried? And, he, and he's like, no. We're compared to what is happening here. We are insignificant. They don't even see us. Yeah. So as soon as they pass, we'll just quietly walk out and go back to where we're supposed to go. Yeah, that's true. Because the only one that would have noticed would have been the jailer, and and he really fell for what the doctor was saying yeah. that last time. Which, I, again, it's like, I really, like, I took a step back, and I was like, he has fallen for everything the doctor has ever told him. So well, he's, you know, he's an uneducated man. Yeah. Who is, you know, on the uh, lowest rung of the social ladder there, and he literally has to do whatever somebody above him says. Yeah. So he, yeah, otherwise, as, you know, Lemaitre th- uh, threatened him, you know, if you don't keep that girl in her cell, I'll have your head. So... No matter, yeah. you know, come what may, I will keep that girl in the cell because I want to keep my head. Yeah. Uh, that also reminds me of the joke they say. It's like, you know, uh, you can't, Robespierre can't really talk to you right now. He tried writing something, but we can't read. So, yeah. uh, And I would imagine probably more than 85% of the people in France couldn't read at that point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that uh, that's pretty much all I wrote down for this episode. Um, so yeah, that is the end of season one, which, wow. yeah, that, that was also interesting at the end where, you know, it just cut to the stars and they were talking and it's like, all right, well, see you next time. You don't really get a preview for next time. <laughs> so other than the name of the next episode being Planet of Giants, um, which now that strikes me as being fun because, you know, e- even if they are somewhat, you know, alien and not humanoid, but again, that was always fascinating to see, the technology of, you know, having the Doctor and Ian and Barbara and Susan and then whoever these giants are. I don't know if that's yeah. it or if these I, are just, you know, somewhat slightly larger. I mean, I was going to say, it's like, I will be curious to see how they do giants on the budget that they had back then. <laughs> so, um, the only other thing I could think of is just getting the biggest actors you possibly can yeah. to Well, it's to like when they, when they did the uh, Censorites, obviously getting all those short people to, to play the yeah. Censorites. so... Um, but yeah, we will be watching that next time, which I think that's only, it's only three episodes for that one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. Is there anything else? I, I, I guess just real quick thoughts on the season overall. Um, which it, that does mean going back to trying to remember all the way back to the first serial, which those first three, we broke up a bit, but yeah. Um, uh, well, uh, again, uh, it's just, it's obviously fascinating. Uh, it's, I, again, I, I, you know, I've said this often, it's the historicals that, that kept me interested. Uh, and again, I watched this faithfully for three solid years before we came back to the United States. So um, 
I'm I'm constantly amazed at how much I have forgotten, you know. Yeah. Um. So I'm looking forward to season two. Yeah. Um. It, the episodes have definitely gotten better as they've gone along because that first episode, it's like, all right, well, the first part was really interesting, and then we get the caveman, all right, or whatever, <laughs> and then we get the Dalek episode. And it's like, okay, well, this is cool because we know about the Daleks, you know, just from you know, watching the rest of Doctor Who, and it's like, all right, this is cool. Could have been three episodes shorter, but whatever. And then it's like, all right. And then after that was Edge of Destruction. It's like, okay, this is starting to get a bit more interesting. And then we get Marco Polo, and then we go... We basically have our back and forth on historical episodes and sci-fi episodes. It's like, okay, this is starting to get pretty consistent. Everyone's getting comfortable in their roles, except Susan, who's clearly given nothing to do. Yeah, and that's not her. That's not the actress's no, fault. No, that's, it, that's not her. It's, it's the fact that they don't know what to do with her. Yeah. Um... Which is interesting because it's like, okay, well, you know, they've got Ian and Barbara and they're more at the at the front uh, of, you know, the action happening. Whereas, you know, in this era, the Doctor takes more of a back seat. He still does stuff, but he's more sort of in the background. And it's like, okay, well, you know, Ian and Barbara, okay, they're doing stuff because, you know, they're teachers and, you know, they're very skillful. And it's like, okay, so Susan... Is just a teenage girl. And it's like, okay, well, what do we have her do? Yeah, that is the exact thing that they will do in the modern episodes with, like, you know, Rose or Amy Pond. It's like, these are just teenage girls that he brings. And they have way more to do than Susan ever did. Yeah. But then I guess at that point, the Doctor is the main character. So... Yeah. I don't know. And it's always interesting. I want to uh, basically say thank you to all the people who make uh, comments. Uh, you know, we are finding out, uh, because, you know, although I was a fan of Doctor Who in the 60s, I'm not a hardcore, I, I'm not as up on all of the behind-the-scenes stuff. You know, uh, finding out that, you know, uh, if you had uh, a set like Marco Polo, you were going to spend a whole lot of money, which meant you didn't have a lot of money for the next one. Uh, yeah. I've worked at theaters like that before. Uh and I've I've n- never understood that you know uh, when when your mom and I were in charge of a theater we we've done that a couple of times, uh, it was always look you can I mean the old saying is you can't rob Peter to pay Paul, uh, you have to give each show what it needs don't spend you know half of your season budget on this first show and then the others have to suffer for that you know every show has to have the same chance at being good so I'm I'm constantly amazed that they were. They weren't doing that. Uh, but again, I, as we saw in Adventure in Time and Space, I don't know that some of the the original people thought that this was going to survive. Yeah. You know? I mean, it definitely... It would have taken a while because, like, okay, they were doing all the pre-production, all right, you know, the set guy didn't want to, you know, build this TARDIS set. And then, so, then you have to wait for how long it takes before the show starts that you know huge boom in popularity it's like okay well it's it's five weeks for the original serial because you know they had to re-air the the first episode uh, after the kennedy assassination and then it would have to be one or two maybe three episodes into the dalek serial before it's like okay we need to start taking this seriously you know the daleks we've gotten you know millions of viewers on this but even then probably by the time that you know, they started to get this boom with the Daleks. They had probably finished filming the Daleks. And it was like, okay. So then they took a step back. They did, you know, the Edge of Destruction, which was just on the TARDIS. Then, finally, they have a chance. Okay, the next thing that we can do, now that we know that this is going to be big, will be Marco Polo. And that's where it starts to it starts to go. Yeah. And then they blow a lot of money on Marco Polo. So, you know... Keys of Marinus suffers a little bit from that. Yeah, and um, it's also fascinating to find out how the writers didn't have a lot of time to do these. You know, like uh, uh, in, in Keys of Marinus, uh, I read that, uh, you know, they had laid out basically they wanted a treasure hunt sort of thing. They were laying out the episodes. But then, given that framework, they didn't have a lot of time to go back in and fix a lot of that you know it's basically yeah. here's the script there's no time for rewrites you're just gonna have to film it the way it is right so um and that's rare nowadays nowadays of course you know they they put these scripts out and say hey listen you know we're, we're looking for people to write them and i would imagine that they have most of the scripts before the first season ever starts 
you know, the scripts are already written yeah. and they're ready for rewriting and whatever, you know, as the season changes. But you've got full-fledged scripts, not just, you know, <laughs> here's five sheets of, I think, what is going to happen in each episode, and now I'm going to, you know, spend a week fleshing that out. Yeah. It's like, all right, these are the things that need to happen. This is the amount of episodes that you have. And so people are scrambling. It's like, okay, I got this, this, this. Okay, I guess I can... That, that, that's pretty big, so we'll put that in episode six. And then you write episodes four and five, and it's like, man, not a lot... Ha- I didn't really put a lot that happening in episodes yeah. four and five. Well, it doesn't matter. I can't go back and fix that. I have to go write episode yeah. six now. So now, I, Again, I've told you I've, I've written plays, but you also know uh, I was a uh, <clears throat> newspaper reporter for a couple of years. And, you know, writing uh, on a daily basis, uh, I, I can do that. But the thing is, you have, you know, a certain amount of column inches to fill. If somebody said, you know, I need a full-fledged half-hour script by tomorrow, that's not going to happen. You know, I can write a story that takes 10 minutes to read, but I can't have a story fleshed out that's going to take 30 minutes to film because 30 minutes of filming does not necessarily mean 30 pages. You know, it's sometimes it's much more than that because you not only have to set up all the dialogue and all the characters, but, you know, where is the camera going to go? You know, what kind of special effects are we going to need? What about the sound and the lighting and all that? So, yeah, yeah. I, I'm fully aware of that. And it's just, it's interesting to see how that evolves over this first season. Yeah, definitely. Because we are we are in a much better place by this episode than, we're, than where we were when we started. You know, just sets, writing everything basically has definitely improved over those first cavemen that we watched two <laughs> years ago yeah that long ago two years wow yeah it, it would have been about two years ago and then yeah. and then about one year ago from today is when we were going through like uh stuff like kinda and everything we're so sorry which i i do remember i don't remember what it was but on, on one of our latest episodes we said something. I don't remember what it was, but mm. someone was like, all right, you're forgiven for Kinda. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. So <laughs> it took a year, but we got there. <laughs> we got there. So that is the one episode where, you know, once we get back to that episode, I would be curious to rewatch that yeah. and see if we just miss something. You know, we'll have a bit more of the Fifth Doctor by that point. It's like, I, I, that's the one where it's like, okay, I want to, I would want to rewatch that. Yeah. But that's a long way away. That was like season nineteen. So, um, well, so yeah. keep plowing through. Yeah, we will keep going. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much it. That is all of our season one reactions. We will see you guys next time for season two. Join us for season two. Season two, maybe also a movie thrown in there. Oh God, <laughs> that's that's gonna be fun. <laughs> no, it's not. No, but. Uh, uh-huh. it, no, let's not even. We won't think about the movie. Okay, let's not think about that. But, um, but yeah, that is pretty much it. With all that being said, we're Alex and Dad from Seventh Hour Films, and we will see you guys next time. Take care. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. If you want to watch all of our season one reactions all over again, you can click on the playlist. You can subscribe if you haven't done that already, and be sure you hit that notification bell. You can support me on Patreon and follow me on social media. Links below in the description. See you guys later.